day. Hi, welcome to The Shaman and the Mermaid, and we're here to give you your astrological forecast from June 3rd to July 3rd. We're passing through the solstice, summer solstice, a couple retrogrades, big ones, this report, a lot of activity, and um, we'll just dive into it with some uh, quotes from the soul written by Katrina. <laughs> well, I don't know that it's really mine, but um, it came to me as a reflection back on another quote that I've heard before and I kind of wordsmithed it into nothing is more attractive than a soul on fire and what I mean by that is when we are in alignment with our values and our soul's purpose that lights our soul on fire and that to me is so incredibly beautiful to see in a human being when they're in accordance with their beliefs and their moral compass and at the same time that's in alignment with what it is that they're here to do on the planet and they light up their inner fire is very much visible to those who see them and you know these people, they walk into a room and they're just brilliant from the moment they come in. And it's not necessarily because they have an aesthetic beauty that um, we value seemingly in this society. It's that they have a complete um, confidence and awareness and almost a wholesome goodness to them that radiates out from the inside and that is what is so attractive and that is where the quote came from and the reason I selected that or we selected using that for this report is because there's a lot of aspects that are asking us if our values or our moral compass is pointing towards our soul's purpose and if they're in alignment and congruent and if we're doing the things that we need to be doing to walk that path and to let our soul light up and be on fire. That inner radiance, by the way, in Sanskrit is called tejas. Tejas. T-E-J-A-S. And so uh, I always joke and say, let your tejas be contagious. And some of the aspects are asking us, as I said, for these alignments, to, you know, check in and see if these alignments are there for yourself. And then if they're not, there's some aspects that are going to really come down. Um, I call it as a challenge, um, the squares is <laughs> what I'm referring to. Uh, and Michael would find a little bit more of a, a nicer way to say that. But there will be some challenges if we're not kind of lining ourselves up to those higher principles of our existence. So we can start off with some of the aspects. What do you have? We have uh, Sagittarius full moon on June 3rd, and that's partly uh, why we chose the nothing is more attractive than a soul on fire. Sagittarius is a fire sign. It's the last of the fire sign. It also has to do with one's beliefs and philosophy, hopefully in its deepest way aligning with your soul and the laws and the ritam of the universe. So. On this Sagittarius full moon, nothing is more attractive than a soul on fire. Full moons illuminate our inner world. We get to see what's going on with our emotions, with our intuition, with our memories. It points out how we're taking care of nurturing ourselves or not. Um, the moon has to do with mother and child relationships. So that's both how you relate to your external mother or maternal people. And probably more importantly, how do you relate to your internal parent? Like when you're feeling triggered or upset, does your internal parent come in and tell you you're a bad person, you're guilty, you're shameful, you're um, not lovable, or does your inner parent come in and help you soothe the emotions, help you guide your own self through what to do, and come into clarity? So I think that Sagittarius full moon will help with that. It's also the moon um, Sagittarius of journeying and of venturing and questing travel like to Greece which we are going to be doing during this report and there's still some spots for you to join us so come along June 24th through July 1st we'd love to have you 
and that would be so appropriate for the Sagittarius full moon energy and uh, lighting your soul on fire. So come to Greece with us. All and, right, that's it. <laughs> and uh, another little bit, um, travel and vision and journeying is an, an important part of Sagittarius energy and also truth speaking your truth, walking your talk, being your talk, being in that highest way. So I think that also aligns with what we're saying in that um, is your moral compass in alignment with your soul's purpose. You know, are you being your truth? What your um, instinctual energy is um, internally, are you walking that talk on the outside? And then what else do we have? Well, the next day on June 4th, we're doing a workshop on um, What's Your Soul's Purpose? So perfect. There you go. This sounds like it's a big plug for all the things that right? we're doing. Right, well, I guess so. Just you, align that way. You can tune in online if you're not in Denver. Uh, go to our webpage, karmayogacenter.com, and it's the Astrology 101 series, What Is Your Soul's Purpose? We'll be talking about the outer planets, including Uranus, which on June 4th, that Sunday, Mercury will conjunct Uranus. This one was of interest to Katrina when we saw it. She said, ooh, that's trouble. <laughs> They're two octaves of each other. Mercury is the, you know, the baby version, if you will, of Uranus, which is the grandfather. It's like grandson and grandfather. And they're wily when they get together. I mean, Uranus is already wily. And then Mercury just like, I'm going to do what Grandpa does. And so to me, the two of them together conjunct is a little bit of potential for um, seemingly random uh, shenanigans. But uh, Mercury is very mercurial, so uh, nothing is random. It, very meditated out and premeditated out and I feel like it's a good time to check in with ourselves and our own personal maybe some vengeance that we have uh, that we'd like to you know act out upon and reel that in because this is a day that it would potentially unleash on somebody and it would, would be best if we have that in check going into this day and not seek that revenge or spite towards somebody else. And, you know, maybe instead use that really lightning bolt, um, powerful energy of these two coming together to transform some of that vengeance or resentment or animosity that might be burning inside, keeping our souls from really shining, you know, that Buddhist saying of um, resentment is like swallowing poison and hoping the other person dies. That's, a, that's poison to ourselves when we're holding on to vengeance and resentment. So maybe instead of spitting it out, your venom on somebody else, instead do a little extraction of that on your own self on that day. And then we move along to what I feel is a, a really big part of the theme of nothing is more attractive than the soul on fire is Venus is going to move into the sign of Leo and Venus will also be in opposition to Pluto and Pluto is the soul and Venus is our values and they're sitting across the table from each other on June 5th and they're saying are we in alignment with each other or what you value in your day-to-day -day life you know what you hold as important and what you feel is integral to your existence is that moving towards what it is that you're here to do your soul's purpose and then venus moving into leo is um i think that's a really uh great opportunity for the soul to be on fire i mean leo is a fire sign venus again is love and values and so Love and Values is moving into a very fiery, on-stage kind of um, sign that likes the childlike play. It's perfect for the upcoming summer solstice energy to really let yourself um, be attractive. It's an attractive um, combination, Venus and Leo. Do you have something on them? Those are big ones there. Um. Not much. You got a good cover on it. It's the Leo Aquarius axis between Venus and Pluto, and that's all about the personal self and the transpersonal self, meaning 
how do you show up in your daily life with an open heart? The transpersonal self in this case would be connecting to your high mind, your spirit, your soul, and are those two in alignment, as Katrina said. It's good to point out that access line. Okay, and then we move on to June 11th, and there's a lot going on in that day, and you want to tackle it first. Um, Pluto is retrograding currently and has been for a month. It's been holding at zero degrees of Aquarius for about 30 days. And when Pluto retrogrades, it's very slow. Mm -hmm. So now it's going into Capricorn, which it had left Capricorn for the first time since the 1790s, <laughs> way back two centuries ago, two and a half centuries ago. And it's dipping back in Capricorn um, until the end of 2023. Uh, and then in uh, January, uh, on the day that the sun goes into Aquarius, January 21st, 2024, Pluto will go back into Aquarius. But now, when we go back into Capricorn, this is looking at what's crucial. It's at the 29th degree of Capricorn, and that's considered the most intense degree of any sign. Not bad or good, but Capricorn is karma and dharma, and Pluto is the soul. So there's that alignment again. So, I mean, if you're in alignment with your soul, then nothing's more attractive than a soul on fire. <laughs> um, pretty simple said. This can bring up probably globally or on the collective consciousness some reviews of things that have gone down in the past couple years, decades, and centuries around government, around policy, around countries, around wars, around money, institutions. Not bad or good because the ultimate thing of both Pluto and retrograde is to bring things out of the shadows into the light so that they can go in alignment with spiritual law. Did you want to say anything about that, That was Pete? good, yeah. Okay. We have Mercury trine Pluto that same day, so that's supporting that Pluto energy. And then Mercury goes into its home sign of Gemini that day of June 11th. This is all June 11th. Pluto retrograde into Capricorn, Mercury trine Pluto, Mercury into Gemini, and finally Venus square Jupiter. What do you got on that? <laughs> well, there's a couple things on those aspects. The Mercury stuff, Mercury trining Pluto and Mercury moving into its home sign of Gemini, I think is um, really powerful for us stepping into our truth and, um, and speaking it, not just... Um, the Sagittarius full moon, which is illuminating what is our truth, but then the Mercury piece um, is saying, now speak it. Speak what's in the soul of yourself and, and walk that talk, as I mentioned earlier. So there's another layer of that really pushing us to take ownership of what it is and who it is that we are. And then the other piece of a square, I said these squares are coming in that can have, um, if we're not in alignment, then the squares are going to say, okay, then here's an obstacle for you to work with to help polish you a little bit. How's that for the optimism of what a square is? But uh, Venus squaring Jupiter, you know, our values, love, um, our bodies, and Jupiter is the teacher, it's the expansive energy, it's the um, faith and spirituality, and the square is um, saying, hey, come on, you're not there. So there might be some um, oh, challenges, upset, discomfort around our um, body images, around... Uh, what it is, expectations of ourselves, feeling like we're not enough, that we're not doing enough. And, you know, sometimes when those feelings arrive, in, it, they're oftentimes um, coming from a place of insecurity. But sometimes when those feelings arrive, maybe it's an opportunity for us to take a look. Am I doing enough? Am I... Um, holding back, um, resisting my growth out of fear or laziness or whatever it is. Can I step up my game a little bit? And I think that's what the square is asking for us to take a look at ourself a little bit more and um, expand if we need to. So then, uh, is there more on that one too? No, good. We'll cruise on. There's a lot of aspects. We're skipping over many of them and just highlighting 
some of the bigger ones that we think are of merit to talk about. June 17th is the next day, and Saturn is going to go retrograde. And what does that mean? Um, Saturn's in Pisces right now, hanging out in Neptune's home territory. And uh, I think this is kind of, you know, a break. Ah, good. We need a break from Saturn. Saturn is going on retreat. Ah, to Greece. To Greece, to the <laughs> island of Lesbos. You still have time on June 17th. You can still sign up. Um, Saturn retrograde in Neptune, to me, is like going on a, a journey, like, you know, climbing up to uh, a mountain ashram in Bhutan to go do your work and meditate and connect with the tigers in the jungle and really go deep in and see where your soul's at. Um, the, the Pisces piece all around this in the home territory of Neptune is watery feeling, but it's also that great imagination, seeing beyond, um, seeing into the higher realms or the beyond realms and seeking unconditional love, letting go of a lot of conditioning. This is also the Gemini new moon and uh, Gemini energy, it challenges me a little bit as I've mentioned before, but what I'd like to think of this particular new moon, because new moons are always like a, a fresh start of a month cycle or a month cycle, and this moon cycle is flavored around Gemini, which I'm going to say is like, begin some new curiosities. Maybe this is a great opportunity for you to start a new hobby, especially in summertime. We have longer time in the day. We can be outside or maybe some of those new um, curiouses that we have. And let, let yourself be explorative and, um, you know, have a sense of awe and wonder about things for this particular Gemini new moon on June 17th. And then is there more on that one you'd say? Do you have another slant on Gemini besides curious? Um, I recommend looking at nature because yeah. look outside your window right now that is Gemini energy sometimes we get into the heady piece when it's in people and making decisions and nervous or can't um, decide on things but it's also the abundance of nature and flowers and green and rain and rivers flowing I mean that to me is the balanced essence of Gemini energy creating life and putting it into motion and sharing it and being communal well, that was a good spin, too. And another one that I can add in about Gemini energy is the two twins, um, Pollux and Castor. One is in human form, and one is more godlike. And even though they're twins and brothers, one has the infinite and one is finite. And so it's also one of the signs that really wants us to balance our energies between the two worlds. Like, how do I do this human earth walk while holding my spiritual, spiritual energy in its highest form? And sometimes that's really challenging to do. In fact, I think it's one of the most challenging things to do in our life. And that goes in alignment to the whole um, theme this time of nothing's more attractive than a soul on fire. And that's like learning how to walk that thin line between the two worlds and find the balance between. So perhaps this Gemini new moon can help open up some of that energy for you as well. Nice mythology. Thank you. And then we'll cruise along to uh, Father's Day, which is the day after the 18th Sunday. And the sun, which is your outward persona, is going to be squaring Neptune. And Neptune has a lot of the same energies as Pisces. So it's um, kind of interesting that Saturn is retrograde in Pisces and um, the sun is going to be squaring Neptune because they have kind of a, a similar energy to both of them. And the sun squaring Neptune is another one of those challenges. And how would you, I'll let you frame this one because you're always more delicate with the, the squares. Well, I agree that they're challenges. I think it's a yes and. The challenge is intending to bring us into a resolution so that we're in harmony with spiritual law. 
And so it's also an opportunity. Opportunity. And it's a dynamic raise. I mean, the, the analogy I like to give sometimes, it's like if you were playing tennis against someone who's better than you, it's challenging, but they might inspire you to play better, and it might be fun. It doesn't always have to be hard, but it might be a challenge. It's like a call to a challenge. Sometimes we need that, you know, Viking Valhalla to come up and be like, we're going to sail across the sea. It's going to be hard, but everybody's like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> Katrina's a Viking, uh, <laughs> Gustafson and her lineage. Let's do it. So maybe see this more as, oh my God, something's coming at me, and more it's like, let's go forward into some unknown venture of Neptune, which is spirituality, imagination, creation. Maybe there's some big desire and dream, Neptune, that you want to create, and it's challenging because you don't know all the steps and there's things that you need to do every day and have you know um, your determination and your personality wants it and this is a call to action to say go do it step up and find the way it's part of that um, the universe helping us get our alignment of our soul's purpose with our core values and and what we have to share in this world so that was a beautiful framework uh for that sun square Neptune on Father's Day. And I also take, the sun is the father figure in um, the zodiac and um, squaring Neptune, which is kind of murky. And so um, maybe there's some challenge there on Father's Day with our own internal uh, masculine energy that we could suss out in that opportunity to um, better ourselves, but also perhaps with your own paternal um, person in your life, that if it feels conflictual, and sometimes you know these holidays are a force that we have to go do, or maybe we're, we've lost our father, as Michael has, and um, it, it brings up some difficult emotions, but um, perhaps let yourself go into the ocean of that Neptune energy and, and swim in the spiritual faith of it all and trusting that um, everything's working out for its highest good instead of going into it with, you know, the boxing gloves on, you know, more let it turn into a, a bit of a surrender and, and let that lifeboat come floating by in that big ocean for you instead. Nice. And then uh, right after that, we have summer solstice on June 21st. And that's when you'll be probably getting ready, packing your bags for Greece, because that's <laughs> just a few days later. That is when we are jumping on the plane to go to Greece. The sun will be moving into Cancer. So happy birthday to all the Cancer out there, all the Cancer folks. And summer solstice, of course, is the longest day of the year, and the sun is uh, really at its exalted state, and at least in this hemisphere. And cancer energy is about, as Michael put it, uh, your inner child as well as your inner parent, and there's a lot of emotion. So. Um, when we hit that highest point of that full sun or that let your soul be um, on fire, this is really a mastery of our emotions, listening to what the inner child is holding on to, listening to the guidance of the inner parent. And if the voice of the inner parent is critical and um, condemning, then we do some work on that to um, bring that into a more nurturing and caregiving parental voice. And if the inner child is still wounded or holding on to some of those resentments or fears, then we work with that one as well. So it's a big day for kind of letting the sun have its full exaltion on or brightness or exposure to our whole self, our whole inner landscape. What do you think about sun moving into Cancer? I'll bring it to the perennial astrology. This is one of the seasonal changes, start of summer. And it's also the shift in the Celtic tradition. It's when the um, 
Oak King is slayed by the Holly King, or they, if we don't want to have them kill each other, they hand off the sword to each other to exchange <laughs> that That's you nice. are now the ruler. And that the Holly King is who rules until December 21st, which is the winter solstice, and it's who we traditionally call Santa Claus. Um, so it's the now, after that point, it's the waning of the light. The days will get shorter. It was my grandmother's saddest day of the year. She was like, ah, nuts. After that, she's like, the light's going away. <laughs> but I, I would put it back to the wheel of life. This is one of the transitions of cycles of time, both for a human being, for a planet, for a season. And so it's just something to reflect on participate with. We have a bird feeder here and our <laughs> bird friends are singing to us. And they're singing to you. There's nothing more attractive than a soul on fire. Do you like a birdie? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> so we're almost there. We're jumping then from June 21st solstice to June 26th. There's a couple of things there. Uh, Mars is, or sorry, Mercury is going to move into Cancer as well. So Mercury and the Sun are following each other so anything the sun's doing, Mercury's doing a couple days later. So that's speaking to our emotions, speaking to what that inner child, inner parent is saying, and again, walking our talk and letting it be our truth. And then Mars is going to square Uranus. And there's another one of those squares that I think is, you know, something to pay attention to. This is a bigger one. And you had some thoughts on it. Um, Mars is having to do with your masculine energy. And the most balanced version of masculine energy that I would offer up is being open-hearted. Same with the most balanced version of feminine energy is being open-hearted. So in their essence, there's no difference, but one follows the channel of going outward and going into the world with the open-heartedness and sharing it with others. When Mars is squaring Uranus, it may challenge your open-heartedness and you could then go into the shadow side of Mars, which is defensive, projecting, warrior-like. It's not that the warrior's bad, but you may use it inappropriately. And Uranus can be sudden shifts, unexpected changes. It could also be a revelation. Something could blow your mind away and you're not, you don't take it well because it's not in the paradigm of how you perceived reality, but you're getting a taste of the bigger reality. But remember, as Michael put it, these are um, opportunities for you to polish or be inspired. So um, that's June 26th. And then scooting on down to June 28th, Neptune is going to go retrograde. And it's in its home sign of Pisces. And so th that also means, because we know that Saturn is in Pisces, and... Neptune and Saturn are both going to be doing a real slow backstroke in that Piscean water and they're hanging out together and I really like that concept of Neptune, um, you know, the water's calm a little bit when, in that retrograde and Saturn who's usually a little bit more fierce and terse and questioning if we're doing everything we're supposed to is kind of, you know, as Michael put his gone on retreat to the Himalayas to find its Zen. And so the two of them taking that retrograde in Pisces really allows for us to feel into our soul's purpose a little bit more. What is my Dharma, which is Saturn? What is the karmas that I'm holding on to that I could be clearing out? Saturn. And Neptune is my spiritual prowess, my um, limitless possibility as a human being and everything is in this slow float in that Piscean spiritual water to allow us to really take a look and then when we arrive you know on the other side of that we can step out with that soul on fire kind of feeling because we've done some of that integration or contemplation swimming in those waters and then one last is another square. I told you they're loaded with squares. We have Venus is then going to square Uranus. Just as Mercury is kind of right behind the sun, Venus is sort of right behind v uh, Mars in some of these. So just as Ur or Mars, the masculine um, outward open-heartedness was squaring that radical change of Uranus, Venus on July 2nd, is going to square Uranus and what's your take on that one? I'd say everything I said about Mars but reverse it and put it inside. Are you being open-hearted with yourself? 
Are you being um, aware of your own personal values and holding that and nurturing, particularly if Uranus is delivering something unusual, random, not random meaning you didn't expect it, that's not random to the universe, and um, or something revealing that was not in your perception. That's one of the definitions of a revelation is your perception suddenly got opened, but it doesn't mean you always wanted to see what was on the other side. <laughs> Uh, some things you don't want revealed, and some, sometimes it's necessary, though. So that leads us up to the July 3rd Capricorn full moon, and that's where we'll pick you up next time. In the meantime, enjoy summertime. Jump on that plane to Greece with us, and we'll see you on July 3rd. Remember, nothing is more attractive than a soul on fire. Smooch. Namaste. Sri Ganesha, 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 Sri Ganesha,